Let's turn to the book of Joshua. So good to see all of you. You know, sometimes we don't understand just how blessed we are. And worse than that, we don't understand sometimes just how blessed we can be. But we got to change some things if we're going to receive the things that God has for us. Joshua chapter 6, we'll begin at verse 1. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. When you found it, I ask that you stand in reverence to the word of the Lord. For those of y'all who are near young people who are not standing, the Bible says to train a child up in the way that they should go. It does not say parent, comma, train them up. It just says train them up. That's an expectation that those that know would train. Amen. The word of the Lord says in Joshua chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram horns. And on the seventh day ye shall compass the city seventh time. And the priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sounds of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. You may be seated. I want to talk to you for a few moments today about God's way. God's way. There seems to be a lot of misunderstanding, even in the realm of Christianity or those who claim to serve Christ today about God's way, what it means, what it looks like, what should we do regarding it? How do we know it? How do we walk in it? What are the benefits of even walking in it? But I want to talk to you a little bit about that today, about God's way. Because so many times we find ourselves in situations where we have an opportunity to make a decision. We can do things the way that the word of God tells us to do them or we can do them our way. And the Bible is full of examples of people that chose either side of the road. They chose it to do God's way and things worked out well. And the Bible is also full of situations where people decided to do it their own way and it did not work out good. You had people that were sitting in the same room listening to the same Jesus seeing the same miracles observing the same healings the same lives being changed and still decided to make their own decisions and go their own way. Judas was right there next to Peter. Both of them was knuckleheads. The only difference between the two of them is one of them made a decision before it was too late to choose God's way. And we have to understand that it's not always easy to choose God's way. But yet it is indeed the commandment. We also have to understand that God's way will rarely look like the way we think it should look. We have to also understand that rarely will God's way agree with conventional wisdom. What it seems right to, for you to do, 
a lot of times what just makes natural sense may not necessarily be what God wants you to do. But we allow this little bitty thing called fear to come in. We allow fear to come in. And because of that fear, we'll decide we don't want to do it the way God tells us to do because it just doesn't line up in our own understanding. We see in the scripture today that God has been moving a people from one place to another. He's demonstrated many miracles. He's demonstrated his power at every turn that they made up their mind to follow him. Briefly before this, he had just brought them over the River Jordan at a time where the word of God says that the River Jordan was overflowing his banks. In other words, he brings this people to a river that is cresting higher than it normally does. And he says, get the people ready because you're getting ready to cross this river. Now the people look to the left down the river a little bit. They ain't see no bridge. They look down the right. They ain't see no bridge. How are we going to get from here to where we need to be? How many of you been there? Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get from where I am today to where I need to be. Lord, I, I, I need to pay these bills. I need to get from no money in my pocket to some money in my pocket that when I write these checks, they don't bounce. Lord, how am I going to get from where I am right now to where I need to be? Me and my wife, we can't even look at each other right now. We can't even have a decent, respectable conversation with each other right now. And I don't see no bridge over from where we are to where we need to be. I got problems with my kids, Lord. What do I do? Because it appears that there's no way out. And he'll tell you, why don't you just try it my way? And a lot of times he'll bring it away and you say, no, I really don't like that way. Because that's going to require me to get rid of something that I value. But these folks are in a state of trusting God. And I love reading the parts of the Old Testament where Israel has made up their mind to trust God. Because you see the mightiest miracles when they are all on one accord. When they all get together and make up their mind that they're going to trust God. He moves on their behalf in mighty ways. He blows their mind. And even more so than their mind, he blows the enemy's mind. If word of deliverance, we could ever get all on one accord. Where we're just going to do it God's way. We're going to quit trying to do it our way. When the, when the pastor stands up here and he says, the leadership needs to be at church at 915. Whenever we make up our mind that we're not going to do it our way. When we're not going to roll out of bed at 845, get on our knees and be praying, asking the Lord to move on our behalf. When we know in our mind there is no way we're going to be the church on time. But we can't figure out why the Lord won't move on our behalf. That's some things that you have to let go of if you're going to do things God's way. Let me help you understand this. It don't work this way where you do it your way and it work out God's way. It just don't work that way. But we, we want to test him. We want to try him. We want to see how far we can get our way. We doing all right. We ain't had too many problems. The lights are still on. My work working pretty good. We'll talk about that. So they come up here to the water. It's overflowing the banks. And the Lord says, well, get the people ready because we're going in. The word of God says he stops the water. And he says they walk over on dry land. He says all of them walked over on dry land. He didn't say they walked over on muddy land. He said they walked over on dry land. That means that God separated out all the water. See, we have to understand that we're a God that has all power. We serve a God that has all power. He's not just a little God. He's not just a kind of God. He's a God that can address all of your issues. He can address all of your problems when you make up your mind to do it his way. And so the, here these people are. They cross over the River Jordan and they enter into a position where God has promised them victory. And the word of God says, now, now, The angel of the Lord comes to Joshua and he says, now here's how you're going to do it. 
And I'm sure in Joshua's mind, he had it ready. Okay, we're going to attack this wall over here. We're going to shoot arrows over here this way. We're going to get some battering rams together, and we're going to attack this section over there. Surely we're going to get the best battle plan that man's heard of. And the word of God came to him, and he said, all I want you to do is get up every morning and just walk around the city one time with your mouth shut. That's important. He said, don't be walking around it playing. Don't be running around it bickering. Don't be running around it mouthing off at the enemy. He said, just go around it one time every day with your mouth shut. Okay, Lord, I can do that. I mean, what you want me to do after we do that one time? Surely we got to go do something else, right? He said, no, just go back home. And when I read this, I began to think about what's going on through Joshua's mind. Because he's got to take this to the people. Hey, y'all, I got the great plan. Lord spoke to me on how we going to take Jericho. And they're, they're, could you imagine the people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, what we going to do? What we going to do? What we going to do? Because we all on one accord right now. We just saw God move on our behalf. And he says, this is what we going to do. We just going to go around it once a day. And the people said, okay, that's what we're going to do. We don't experience the same type of move of God as they experience because when the preacher will tell you something, we can't say okay to it. When the preacher says, look, you need to train your children up in the way they should go. That means you need to have them in Sunday school. That means you need to have them on Friday nights. We won't say okay. We say we got a better way to do it. We say, well, you know, I get off of work. I don't get off work until 6 o'clock. There ain't no way for me to make it. And we say, well, call somebody else up. We'll get your kids there. And we still got another excuse. And then when our children become first-class hellions, then we confused as to what happened. It's because we refuse to do things God's way. You see, God is going to put you in situations where you're going to be tested. There must be a testing season. That's all this is about. All, there, there's some vacancy in heaven. You do understand there's some vacancy in heaven. But everybody can't go. It's room if everybody could go. But everybody don't want to go. But it's room in heaven. Because some folk got kicked out. Now, the Lord's not going to put riffraff in there where he kicked riffraff out. So he said, I'm going to put them down there. And they're going to be a test. And all those that can pass the test, they can come on up here. But the rest of them, I got somewhere else where they can go. They can go where the rest of the riffraff is going to go. So the, the, the life that you live is simply a test put before you to see if you will simply trust God and do things his way. He says, for all of those who do things my way, I got a gift. I got a down payment. I got a key that'll get you into heaven. It's called the Holy Spirit. I'll give it to you. It'll lead you. It'll guide you into all truths. It'll literally show you my way. He says, if you follow that, he says, it'll guide you all the way to my presence. But we still refuse to do it God's way. Jericho is a very interesting city. Historical data says that it was the most fortified city in Canaan. It had the best walls. It had the best... Natural defense system. Why do you think they went off in there and shut themselves up? They played to their strength. They said, well, if we just shut ourselves up in here because our defenses are so good, they can't get in here. They looked around at the landscape and they said, there's nothing that they have out there that they can get their hands on that can break in here. And so this is what we're going to go with. But they didn't understand that there was a group of folks out there that were going to do it God's way. And so here they go and they begin to prepare to do this. And so we have to understand that it's really about God's way against the world. 
We know what happened in this situation, and the results are the same every single time. When we do things God's way, the world can't handle it. There is victory when we do it God's way. You see, the world's way will get you in trouble. It'll mess your mind up. Because, see, the world says, you know, kids, they, they too young to get married. They need to get out there and spend some more time getting to know themselves. They need to shop around. That's what the world will tell you. But there's no wisdom in it. The Bible says that if you can't contain yourself, you need to get married. The Bible says it's better married than to burn. But all of a sudden, that became, you know, that, that no longer matches unconventional wisdom. Go out and get your two or three STDs. Go out and get your two, three babies out of wedlock. And then go out and then try to find you somebody that wants you to marry you. With all your junk and, and, and your garbage. That's conventional wisdom. That's what it says. And people say, oh yeah, that made great sense. But the word of God is very true on fornication. Y'all know what fornication is, right? That's having sex to some, with somebody you ain't married to. God has an expectation for you to get married before you get busy. It's just that simple. It works better that way. There's a whole bunch of people out here dying, catching all kind of crazy stuff and all kind of stuff going on because they don't want to do it God's way. Oh, but my baby, he loved me. He would never, ever do that to me. Yeah, okay. Let your cousin sm walk by him and smile at the wrong time. He don't love you enough to give you his last name, but he loves you enough to be faithful. Where's the wisdom in that? I'm just trying to help you understand the importance of doing things God's way. He tell you to pay your tithes. 10%. You get your check? 10%. Essentially what he's telling you, he says, you can do more with 90% and me on your side than you can do with 100% of your money and me against you. See, that's essentially what's happening here is that there's an array that's being taken place. All the folks that are with God are aligning with him, and all the folks that are not are not. There are some people in Jericho that's aligned with God. They've been obedient. They're doing what they're doing. They're just waiting on their deliverance. And it's coming on its way. The Bible says that all the wall fell down, but yet the Bible also says that Rahab lived on the wall. But yes, she was all right. Her and all her family that made up their mind, they were going to do it God's way. But we don't want to do it God's way. We want to put in 3% or $20 or whatever's at the bottom of our purse. And this ain't about, I, I don't receive a check. I don't get paid by Word Deliverance Ministries. I'm not on the salary here. So the devil lying to you and trying to tell you about you know, well, that he preaching up there because he wants your money. I don't want your money. I don't get your money. I want you blessed. You see, I'm trying to help you understand when I made up my mind to do things God's way. See, I used to pay tithes, and then I, I got stupid. Me and my wife started going through some things. We left church, and it wasn't nowhere. I knew to pay my tithes. I didn't have enough wisdom to understand. I need to send my tithes somewhere, and so I wasn't. And so when I got here to this church, I made plenty of money. I just didn't ever seem to keep none of it in my pocket. It was like somebody went in all of my clothes and cut all the pants out. You know how them devilish women do? They cut their shorts, they, they shorts so short that they can't even have pockets and they got to get rid of them too. I, and like I didn't have no pockets. Everything that went in them went out. But when I came and I made up my mind to do it God's way, things begin to change. It's, it's the testimony you hear over and over and over and over again. Yet we don't want to do things God's way. We struggle even in the little things to do things God's way. He told the people here, just walk around it once a day. And they were obedient. This was not about an exercise in walking. This was not about them getting their steps in for the day. This was not about them closing their rings on their little smartwatch. This was about showing that they trusted God more than anything. This was a faith thing. This was about, Lord, if you said it this way, we're going to do it 
this way, and we're going to let you work it out. That's what choosing God's way is all about. When we, when we stand up here and we jump up and down and we tell you, you need to do this, you need to do that, stop doing this, don't do that, stay off of Facebook. Why do you have a Snapchat account? Who are you trying to impress? We're telling you these things because we're trying to guide you down God's way. Because we understand that the blessings are there. But we live in a society today where we just kind of want to sort of do what God said and get away. And we've been lied to and we said, well, you know, God's grace and God's mercies are sufficient enough for us. But they're not sufficient enough to you in disobedience. There's not a gauge meter on disobedience where, you know, God is not pleased with a lot of disobedience. But he'll accept a little bit of disobedience. God expects us to be completely obedient. And so when the word of God comes to you, whatever the venue it is it comes to you, is valid. If you hear something on the radio, you know that's the word of God, you need to apply it. If you, hear from the, if you hear from the pulpit, you need to apply it. If some, one of the brothers pull you off to the side, you need to apply it. Every bit of it, not just parts of it, because God's blessings are contingent on it. How do you know that? How do you know that, preacher? Let's go, to, let's go real quick to Numbers chapter 20. Let's go real quick to Numbers chapter 20. Who's Moses? Was Moses the man of God? Moses has a, a long resume of doing things God's way. Here we're going to read about something. One little thing he didn't do right, and it got him in trouble. Moses' job, Moses is getting up every day. He's hanging on the promise. He wants to go to the promised land. That's what he want to do. He'd have seen God move.